So after filling up a couple of different skiffs with a bunch of modules which I never thought I would buy so many, I decided I would do a little DIY project and build my own case. And in this video I'm going to show you how I did it. To save a little effort, I decided to order a set of 3U plus 1U 84HP rails which came with mounting brackets and the threaded inserts from modularsynthlab.com. They cost a little bit of money but I was able to assemble it in just a few minutes and everything fit perfectly. Using the assembled rails as a guide, I cut some pieces of cardboard to the size that the case panels would be, adding a half inch on all four sides of the base panel and on two sides of the side panels. It's a good idea to find a large module, like I've used elements in this case, um, to screw in and it helps the rails stay square. I took the cardboard panels to a hardware store where they used them as a template to cut the pieces of half inch plywood. I added a small buffer in the measurements to account for any errors during cutting. I also cut holes in one of the end panels to fit the power jack and switch. Use wood glue to glue the sides together. Using two long clamps would have been better for this, but if you're like me and you're cheap and you don't want to buy them, you can use a heavy books and a toolbox like I've done here. It's not ideal, but it does work. You can see here I kept the rails in place just to ensure that they're going to fit properly at the end. Next up, we're drilling four holes at each end for the wood screws. Use a small bit for the guide hole and then a shallow drill with a quarter inch bit so that the screw head sits flush. Woodworkers amongst you might be shaking your head that I didn't drill the screws in an angle. You can feel free to eviscerate me in the comments. Before attaching the base panel, we're going to do some sanding to make sure everything is smooth and even. Now to glue the base panel on. Similar process as the side panels, the same toolbox, same copy of the classic culinary work of literature, the La Russe Gastronomique. Now we mark the positions of the 10 screws for the base panel before drilling the guide holes. I want the screws to be invisible on the finished product, so I also drill a very shallow depth with a thicker bit for the screw heads to sink into. To get a nice smooth finish, we need to fill up the spaces above the screw heads and any other small gaps with wood filler. I found out you can actually make wood filler just by mixing some wood glue and some sawdust. More sanding. 
you applied too much wood filler like I did, you can scrape it away with a chisel or a small knife. Be very careful though, as it's easy to gouge a hole in the surface and then you need to add more wood filler again. I did one coat of primer which I then sanded lightly with 200 grit paper. After this the surface will feel very smooth and you're ready to apply the finishing coat of paint. In my case, I wanted something visually unique, so I masked up the two opposite diagonal corners to create stripes. For the bus board I went with the Bifaco Excalibus. It comes with a built-in barrel jack for plugging an AC power adapter into. Unfortunately, the jack on mine was somehow broken during transit, but fortunately I was planning on removing it anyway and wiring the Excalibus up to a separate jack that I would mount directly on the case. The most important thing you need to be aware of when wiring up a separate jack like this is the polarity of the AC adapter plug and also the pins on the jack itself. Usually the center post of the jack will be positive, but you should make 100% sure first or you could end up frying the board. After doing your due diligence, it's still a good idea to test the power supply before screwing it into your case. If all is well, you'll see the three voltage rail LEDs light up. The final steps are to place the rails in the case and attach them with screws on the inside. I stuck these little rubber circles on the corners of the base panel to protect it from scratches and also to stop it from sliding around on table. And that's it! It can seem like a daunting project if you haven't done anything like this before. And you will make mistakes, I made plenty that I conveniently edited out. But it's super rewarding and you will end up with your own unique instrument at the end of it.